Welcome. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the unconscious mind. What is it? Or what's the subconscious mind? What does it do? What, what's its function? And we'll talk a little bit about some of the theories and how you can use it to most effectively find your own healing process. But first, here's the showreel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so first let's start here. As an NLP coach and trainer and someone that works closely with relationships, we work a lot with the unconscious mind because all learning, all behavior, and all change comes deep from the unconscious. Have you ever purposely tried to change a habit? So for example, maybe you tried working out more or you tried to exercise, <laughs> tried to exercise more, or you tried changing your eating habits, or you tried to sit up straighter and found that after a while, you just simply couldn't, that it took so much effort and time to put the energy into creating those change instead of it happening easily and effectively. Now, not to say that we can't force change by actually doing things over and over again, because one of the things that actually creates stronger habits, of course, is taking action and doing the same action over and over and over again. But part of that is because you're also training your unconscious mind to develop that habit, to develop that pattern, to develop that neurological pathway. So what is the unconscious mind or the subconscious mind? People often use those terms fairly interchangeably. In NLP, we talk about the unconscious mind because sub means lesser than. Whereas some people say, no, we call it the subconscious mind because unconscious is when you're in a coma. But really what we're talking about is we're talking about the percent of the brain that we're not aware of, right? The part that determines our breath rate, that helps us digest, that drives our actions, our motivations. One of the directives of the unconscious mind is to keep us safe at all times. And so what that means is our mind creates strategies that we use throughout our whole life to do things or to not do things. So you have a strategy to learn how to feel love or how to find love or how to avoid love. You learn how to get attention or avoid attention. You learn how to work out, how to get a bed out of the morning, how to brush your teeth, how to go to bed, how to go to sleep or not go to sleep. All of these things are run by strategies of your unconscious mind. You may have heard that many of the things that we know or that we believe in our unconscious mind were actually created before the age of seven. So when we're very young, our brains are in different brainwave states and we're little sponges. Like when people say kids are little sponges, it's actually true. We just absorb everything that we hear from the environment. So even one situation, or listening to our mom talk negative about our bodies or having someone call someone else stupid or having someone call you stupid, your siblings, your parents, anybody around you can imprint on your mind and create the strategy with which you run the rest of your life. So what we do as we work with the unconscious mind is help you shift that because the unconscious mind also stores memories. It translates memories. It helps you decide what memories you're going to remember and use to function in your life and which ones you won't. It protects us from memories that are traumatic or emotionally overwhelming, which is why when people are ready to deal with an emotional situation from past or trauma, why sometimes they can have memory breakthroughs because the unconscious mind thinks, okay, now the body or the mind or the situation is safe enough to actually process this or it's necessary to process this in order for the individual safety. The unconscious mind also runs the body. It has a blueprint of what's going to keep us healthy and safe. And that means emotionally, physically, and mentally. So when our unconscious mind needs some support is when we start noticing that we are doing things that may not seem very healthy to us on the outside, but the unconscious mind thinks it's keeping us safe and protected and healthy. We can look at what is the unconscious mind doing for us? How, what is its strategy? And this is beyond just saying affirmations or beyond saying like, oh, I'm a good person, I'm a good person, I'm a good person, right? This is actually changing what is the wiring that is running that is creating this pattern in our lives that our unconscious mind is running. So yes, we could stuff down emotions and pretend like they don't exist and be positive and talk about happy affirmations and pretend our life is all wonderful. And that is good and great. There are places where those 
things are appropriate. But wouldn't it be easier if just like the example with exercise or eating, if we just shifted how our unconscious mind views the world, so it creates a desire, a strategy to help us work out, eat less, eat more healthy, drink more water, feel loved, feel connected, feel calm, release old emotions that no longer serve us. So as we talk about the unconscious mind, this is what we're talking about is what is driving us physically, mentally, and emotionally, hormonally, all of those things. Like, cause it, of course it's gonna help control our brain, which helps control the mind, right? Like we can't, we're gonna separate the systems for ease, but just like in medical practice, like yes, we can look at the stomach, but the stomach's gonna affect the intestines and what's happening in the intestines is gonna affect the rest of the body and where it absorbs and all that, right? So nothing, nothing is a closed system that works within itself. Everything is all inter interrelated, mind, body, spirit. But when we start looking at this aspect of how do we shift the unconscious mind to make the rest of the body more fluid, more free, give it more ease to release emotion more quickly, more gently. This is where you can really start exploring and making big changes within your life. So if you're curious, check out some of my hypnosis tracks. This bypasses the conscious mind. You bring yourself into self-hypnosis using the sound of my voice, and you can actually start shifting your unconscious mind through hypnotic tracks or through pro professional hypnosis with a hypnotherapist such as myself or somebody else around. So I hope this is helpful for you. I'd I'm curious, comment below what other questions you have about the unconscious mind and how it can support you. Please like, subscribe, and share, and just know that you are loved, you are loving, and you are loved well.